For years, the national women's soccer team existed in the shadows of a lackluster Bafana Bafana side, ever the underdogs with very little financial or political support. But with the odds stacked against them, Banyana Banyana became champions of Africa, cementing their place as one of the country's most loved and respected teams. Later this month, they'll take to the pitch in the FIFA Women's World Cup and Claire spent some time with them ahead of their departure. Banyana Banyana, mold breakers, role models, 2022 African football champions. Winning the WAFCON also gives us a lot more confidence. Beating Nigeria really shifted the mentality of the players. Returning to a hero's welcome and the realization that success breeds expectation. Before this AFCON, we always came second best all the time. We were so close yet so far. With access to their final days in training camp, we meet the team and their coach as they prepare for an even bigger challenge, the FIFA Women's World Cup later this month. It's important that we play under pressure. It's important that we get tested. Important that we get challenged because at the end of the day, we're going to play an opponent that is going to put us under pressure. A challenge almost scuppered at the 11th hour. It's just over 100 million. As a lingering dispute with the country's soccer bosses erupts just days before they fly out. Contractual issues must be dealt with earlier. It's early on a cold winter's morning. We are at training camp where the final Banyana Banyana squad will be selected to represent South Africa in the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. Players arrive at the Johannesburg camp from all over the world. These are anxious moments for those on the fringe of selection. They have just three weeks to prove to coach Desiree Ellis and her management team that they've got what it takes always remind the players that your performance will select you. Few understand that better than this former player and three-time Africa coach of the year. The beauty of this team is we can play different formations. So we look for players that can fit into all of that. A lot of our players are pretty quick up front, but we also need players that are versatile, players that can play in more than one position. Every time when it's a build-up, they will press you. It's Desiree's second Women's World Cup as coach. Banyana didn't win a single game last time round, but her team's continental success last year has raised expectations for the players and the country. And the coach is pinning her hopes on rising stars like 25-year-old Linda Mutlalo. She's jetted into camp from Scotland, where she now plays professionally. My father was a coach, so he used to take me to the games. So I think that's when I realized that this is something that I like and I love. Originally from Joburg's West Rand, she's nicknamed the Ranfontein Ronaldinho after one of Brazil's greatest ever players. Back in the day, there was no women's football. I remember I was accused of being a boy because that's how good I was. At what point did you realize that it could actually not just be the game that you love playing, but it can actually be a career choice? I think at the point where I got selected to go play uh, at the Olympics, that was the turning point for me that I need to take this like very seriously. It's an honor that comes at a price. Linda, like so many other players at the camp, spends little time at home these days. She's played for clubs in four foreign countries. Our players have matured over the last four years. They've gotten better. The league has gotten better. Not where we want to be. Players playing abroad, doing really well abroad. So that experience will also help us. We know how our players have matured. At just 29, Robin Mudali is already a 10-year veteran of the national team, having played at the 2012 Olympics as a teenager. Well, how did it all start with you? I started playing at the age of seven with my boy cousins, played in the streets from there, had a love for it and just continued. But being a prodigy only takes you so far in this environment. Like everyone else, Robin's going to have to fight for her place in the World Cup squad. It is nerve-wracking, 
But this is what we want. This is what I love. I love that thrill, stepping onto the field, representing my country, and I just can't wait. The World Cup will be played over a month, with the final in Sydney on the 20th of August. Banyana Banyana are in Group G, along with Sweden, Italy and Argentina. They'll need to finish in the top two in their group to progress to the tournament's knockout stage. It's a tough group and a daunting task, but not for everyone. Why should we be scared? We've been preparing, we've been working hard. We're reaching the end of our first day in camp. As the tension and excitement continue to build ahead of the team announcement, there are no signs of the controversy to come. The World Cup is just weeks away, a busy time for conditioning coach Ridha Ali. How are the players looking? You know, when the girls are on the field, they look good, they feel good, and we can only get better. That's the most important thing. You can be running 10, 15 kilometers, but am I making the right pass? Am I making the right decision? So everything comes together, and that's the perfect thing about having a team. It's not one person. It's everyone working together to see what's best for the team. Is there a difference with the girls that have had the international experience and the ones that are local? I think there'll always be a difference, but it's nothing that we can't work on because they help the girls that haven't played maybe international games. That intensity from the international level is what helps us step up to another level and I think it just makes us better as a team. Competition escalates for the coveted positions in the World Cup team. Behind me is the best of the best and they're giving it their all. But the reality is not all of these players will make it onto the World Cup squad. Unfortunately, if you could take all of them, you would. But you are in a position where you can only take 23 players and if they do not get selected, that doesn't mean that they're never going to get a call up. Time is against us, but we're doing the best we can because it's also important that our girls' mentality are, they are very professional in what they do. Anticipation builds ahead of what will be a career and life-defining moment for the players. And in the corridors of power, the sports top brass prepare for the World Cup team announcement, unaware of the controversy that will soon engulf them. Mutlalo, Glasgow City. The World Cup is the biggest thing, and for my name to be there, it's literally a dream come true. It's every person's dream to play in the World Cup, and yeah, I am living out my dream. Robin Moodley, JVWFC. Your 23 player squad for the FIFA Women's World Cup. After weeks of uncertainty for some and anxiety for all, the team announcement brings a renewed focus. Um, since the selection, there's less anxiety in the team. I think it was a tense two weeks building up to the announcement. But Captain Rifile Jane and her team will soon be thrust into a standoff with the game's administrators that threatens to undermine their preparation and splits public opinion on Banyana Banyana's motives and their methods. Remember, we're just mediating on a crisis here. Just days before their departure, a contract dispute explodes into public. In an unprecedented and highly controversial move, the team refused to play a friendly match against no, no, Botswana. No, 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 we came here to watch the match. We came to support Banyana Banyana. We, the Billed as a celebratory send-off, it's hosted at what the players argue is a substandard venue on Johannesburg's East Rand. This match has really brought huge embarrassment to all of us. It's an ugly scene. Frustrated players and management, an embarrassed Safa, and football fans split between support for the team's cause and those accusing them of behaving like mercenaries. The players insist it's a matter of principle. Contracts remain unsigned and confusion surrounds how the more than half a million rand prize money set aside by FIFA for the group stages of the competition will be split. As the hours pass, the country's football fans are largely in the dark about the behind-the-scenes negotiations, unsure about the fate of Banyana Banyana's World Cup challenge. The events of the past days, however, have been extremely hard on all of us. Contractual issues must be dealt with earlier. 
Then, with less than a day to go before their planned departure, a deal is secured. Safa announces the contracts have been finalized and billionaire businessman Patrice Mutsepe donates an additional 400,000 rand per player towards performance bonuses. You can't be here. If she's building up, you can't be here. There's a lot of challenges, you know, off the field that people don't know about. Your sacrifice, your nutrition, your sleep, being away from your family and friends, that all plays a massive, massive role. Um, and then obviously your injuries and how you come back from that is vital. The last three to five years, there's been an exponential growth in women's football. I think you only have to look at, firstly, fan attendance. Ashley Cotson is a leading local sports agent. This World Cup is the window. Global football eyes are going to be on them. And the ones that do well are going to be picked up and potentially transferred for really big value and for big money, hopefully, into big leagues around the world. And that kind of financial value that the players would be traded for, sold for, can really add value into their teams. It's crunch time for African champions Banyana Banyana. They have fine-tuned their game and they've locked down their strategy, all in preparation to conquer the world stage. Yeah, we're very excited as a team. We're looking forward to this World Cup and we'll do our best. Super excited to come back home with the trophy. Elite athletes arriving at a make or break moment. The contract issues laid to rest, they depart as continental champs, hoping to return as so much more. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.